Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers. My name is Megha Jaiswal. In today's video, we will discuss growth and development. So let's start. Now, first let us understand the concept of growth. What do you mean by growth? Now, growth refers to increase in size, length, height and weight of an organism. Whenever we say that a person has 3 feet height and say about 2 or 3 years, his height has increased to 4 feet that means his height has increased. We can see the physical increase in his height. From here, we can also say that growth is always shown by a living organism. Growth is a function of a living organism. A non-living thing will never show increase in length, weight or height on its own. But a living organism will show increase in length, weight, size, etc. And this is referred to as growth. Now, growth Term is always used in purely physical sense that we can physically actually see this increase in the organism's body. Whether it is increase in size, increase in length, increase in weight, increase in height, we can see it by our eyes. So growth is purely used in physical sense. Another thing about growth we should understand that it is a quantitative aspect. What do you understand by quantitative aspect that we can have a numerical value as i said the height of person is three feet so i have given a numerical value three feet is its unit and the height then increased to four feet so this shows another numerical value so when we are talk about the quantitative aspects we say that they can be measured easily we can give a numerical value to the quantity we are talking about again we can take another example about weight let us say that a child has a weight of 20 kg. Here again, I have given a numerical value to the weight and then his weight has increased to 40 kg. Okay, another numerical value. So quantitative aspects are those which can be measured in absolute terms. See, there are two kinds of values, absolute value and a relative value. When we talk about absolute value, that means we can give an absolute numerical value to that aspect such as weight, height, where we are giving a numerical value. An absolute value always have an absolute zeros on the scale. But when we talk about relative value, relative values are used for those aspects which cannot be measured directly. When we talk about qualities, say a person is now emotionally more mature than before. We cannot give a numerical value to emotional maturity. We can only talk about whether it is better than before or worse than before. So here we can only relate to situations. We can compare to situations when we talk about qualities such as personality, emotional maturity, good behavior. But when we talk about size, length, height, weight, we can give a numerical value to these aspects. So these are quantitative aspects. So growth is a quantitative aspect which can be measured in absolute terms. Now let us see some more characteristics of growth. First point we have already covered. It refers to increase in size, length, height, weight. Second point I also told you that it is a function of an organism. A living organism can show growth. A non-living thing cannot show growth on its own. Let us move on to third point. Intrinsic development. Now growth is an intrinsic development. What do you mean by intrinsic development? Intrinsic means that it comes from inside the body. Now what determines growth? Our growth depends on two important factors. First is genes. Genes are you know hereditary factors which are present in our chromosomes. You have cells then inside the cell we have nucleus. In the nucleus we have chromosomes and on these chromosomes are present genes. Genes actually carry all the information of the body. How the organism is going to be, what kind of structure the organism will have, what complexion he will have, what height the organism will attain, what size it would be. Every information is stored in the genes. These genes are carried forward from generation to generation. Like we have received genes of hereditary characteristics from our parents. That's why we look similar to our parents because the genes we have inherited from our parents carry all that information how we are going to be, how we are going to look, how we are going to grow in physical terms. All this information is contained in our genes. So genes are the important factor that determines growth. So we can also say 
that growth is majorly determined by heredity or hereditary characteristics that's why sometimes we say that let us talk about a person who has a short height but we say that his parents are also of short height so his height is also short why do we say this because that person has inherited that characteristic that short heightedness from his parents then second most important thing that determines growth is hormones now hormones in our body are secreted by endocrine glands the growth and functioning of our body is controlled by the hormones also for example let's talk about growth hormone growth hormone is secreted by pituitary gland which is also called the master gland now when growth hormone is secreted in excess let us say that it is secreted in excess then the person can be abnormally long and this is known as gigantism the height is abnormally long and if the growth hormone is not secreted in enough quantity or less secretion of growth hormone may lead to abnormally short height which is also known as dwarfism so here we also see that the hormones also control the growth of a body the proper secretion of hormones leads to the normal growth of an organism whereas the excess or less secretion of any hormone in our body may lead to abnormal growth or any kind of other abnormality so we see that growth depends on genes and hormones and both of these factors are present inside the body of an organism inside the body of an organism so we can say growth is an intrinsic development because the factors determining the growth are present inside the body of an organism now let us move ahead it follows direction and pattern growth always follows a direction and a proper pattern for example let's take human species you have a basic structure we have two hands two legs two ears however you can see no two individuals are same in all the aspects there are people of different height different weight and many more variations but still they have one thing in common they have a definite pattern a definite structure of a species which every human being follows growth is not something which is happening indefinitely in any direction or any in any pattern we have two hands both of them develop simultaneously in proper length we don't have one hand very short and one hand very long because growth follows a definite direction and pattern so however we can see variations in a species also but a basic structure a basic pattern of growth always remains the same next is it does not continues throughout life it stops after maturity yes growth is not a lifelong continuing process when a person attains maturity that is some more years after adolescence after adolescence ends right from the birth the growth starts in an organism it reaches its peaks and then the degenerative aspects start coming into picture our cells start aging and different degenerative processes in our body starts you can also understand it with the help of the example of height there is a maximum height which an organism attains and then the increase of height stops it is not something which will continue to increase throughout your life increase in height will stop mostly after the your adolescence period ends so growth does not continue throughout life it refers to changes that can be quantified and measured in absolute terms this point we have discussed when i was discussing concept of growth that in growth we are actually talking about those quantities which can be measured and which can be measured in absolute terms that is we can give a numerical value to that quantity then it is irreversible yes growth is irreversible once an organism achieves a certain height the height will not going to reduce it will not come back the person will not again become short so it is irreversible it is a gradual process rather than saltatory yes growth is a gradual process it actually takes place on a slow pace it is not saltatory what do you mean by saltatory that in leaps and bounds it is not something that one day you will see the weight of a person is 20 kg and another day you, day you will see his weight is 30 kg it is not going to happen in this manner the weight height 
size, length, all these properties, all these aspects increases slowly, gradually. It is not uniform all through life. Growth does not take place at a uniform rate. In some stages of life, growth occurs very rapidly. But in some stages of life, growth slows down. Say for example, when we see stages of life, you will come to know that uh, in early childhood stage, growth is very rapid. Then later childhood stage, growth slows down. And again in adolescence stage, growth picks up the pace and it actually takes place very rapidly. So growth occurs very rapidly in adolescent stage. So in same organism, but in different stages of life, growth will not occur at same pace. It is not uniform. And last point is, it may or may not bring development. So growth may bring development or may not bring development. Let us take an example of a child who is very foody. He keeps on eating, eating, eating and he is increasing his weight. But his weight is now has increased a lot more than required. He has become obese. So obesity is not good for him. In fact, the obesity will invite other diseases also. So this increase in weight will not bring any development for that child. So we can say that growth may or may not bring development. Now let us move on to concept of development. Now development is a wider term. It not only involves physical growth, but it involves other aspects also. In human growth, development includes physical, emotional, intellectual, social, moral and personality development. So all the other aspects of an individual are included in development. And now when we talk about all these aspects, the overall changes in all these aspects will bring change in shape, change in form, structure and overall improved working and functioning of the organism. See, when a person is emotionally well developed, intellectually well developed, socially well developed, morally well developed, the overall personality of that person is very well developed. It is actually going to improve his working or functioning in life. So we can say that the development in all these aspects will bring the overall improved working and functioning of an organism. So development is actually a wider term which will include all the aspects an organism shows. Let us see the characteristics of development so we can understand development better. It refers to overall changes in an organism. So we have already understood this point because we are talking about many aspects of an organism, not only physical growth. So taking all those aspects into consideration, development will refer to overall changes in an organism. It continues throughout life. Yes, development is something which will continue throughout life. Growth was only referring to physical increase, which will stop after maturity. But development is taking place in various other aspects. We can say that the physical growth will stop after maturity, but the person will continue to learn in his social life. He will continue to develop emotionally, morally. He will learn many things which will actually result in his personality development. So, although the physical growth has stopped after maturity, but in other aspects, the organism is continuing to learn throughout his life. It implies improvement in functioning and behavior. Now, this point we have also understood because in all the other aspects, the organism is improving. So, it will result in the improvement of his functioning and his behavior. It brings qualitative changes. So in development, we talk about qualities. Okay, when we are talking about emotional development, we are talking about moral development, social development, personality development, all these things are qualitative, which cannot be measured directly. How can you measure personality? How can you measure emotional development? How can you measure social development? You can just compare present situation with a past situation. You can only compare it in relative terms. Yeah, we can say we can only measure it in relative terms. We can only tell whether the person is emotionally or morally better than before or worse than before. So talking about development, we are actually talking about qualitative changes which cannot be measured directly, which are only measured in relative terms. It is reversible. Yes, development has many aspects which are reversible. Let us take an example of social development in a person. A person is socially very developed. A person is uh, socially very mature. He likes to party. He likes to make friends. He likes to sit with his family. He has an extrovert personality. And 
suddenly something very tragic happens in his life which breaks him emotionally he wants to cut off from his family he doesn't want to talk to anyone he now sit alone for long time although he had an extrovert personality but now due to some tragic incidents in his life he has gone into a shell he doesn't want to meet people now so we can say here that the person who was of extrovert personality now has become introvert in nature so here we can see that the social development has reversed the person likes to be social earlier but now he wants to be left alone it is determined by both heredity and environment now heredity has a role to play in physical growth we know not only in height weight etc but some temperamental values also you can say are hereditary in nature environment also plays an important role in development we can say that the interaction of both heredity and environment actually plays an important role in development so development is determined by both the factors heredity and environment heredity sets the limits within which a person can move your intellectual level your temperamental levels your physical levels heredity actually determines those limits and then the environment plays the role by only having the hereditary characteristics and an organism cannot develop on its own proper environment should also be available for him for proper development physical development social development emotional development personality development all these things depends on environment also so environment and heredity both are important now development is also possible without growth so yes we saw that growth actually stops after maturity but development is continuing throughout life so development is also possible without growth once the growth has stopped it will not make any difference a person will continue to develop emotionally socially morally throughout life now after understanding growth and development let us see some differences between them growth refers to changes in structure whereas development refers to changes in function growth is quantitative development is qualitative growth is quantitative because it can be measured development is qualitative which cannot be measured it is one of the parts of developmental process so growth is included in the developmental process but development actually is a wider concept which includes growth and other aspects also growth is concrete it is something which can be seen by our eyes it is visible we can actually see the increase in size length or height etc but development is an abstract concept which we can only feel or imagine growth can be measured in absolute terms and development can be measured in relative terms growth does not continue throughout life but development will continue throughout life growth is irreversible development is reversible growth is determined by heredity but i would recommend you must understand that growth also needs proper environment also so majorly it is determined by heredity but environment also has a role to play in growth also what will happen if an organism has a hereditary character of long height but he never gets proper nutrition or he has genetic characteristics of being very healthy or of very high immunity but what if the environment is not healthy he is continuously living in very unhealthy conditions very disease prone areas or he is not having proper nutrition then will he survive in spite of having very good hereditary characteristics no environment has a role to play in growth so heredity has a major impact in growth but environment also has some impact on growth but you can say that growth is majorly determined by heredity and development is determined by heredity and environment both now this video was an attempt to for those students who are asking me to give lectures in english please do give me your feedback write down in the comment section below if you find the video useful share it with your friends and if you are new to this channel and watching this video for the first time please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon also to get the notifications of my videos as soon as i upload them that's all for today thank you